Best to sing them, man. Come and see me. Walks as good as a hit. Terrence Maitland, I'm arresting you for the murder of Frankie Peterson. For the what? I had the idea for a long time to write a story about a guy who was in two places at the same time and trying to figure out how that could possibly happen. They all match. You can't have been in two places at once. The show opens up with a murder of a small child who's discovered in a town called Cherokee City. Our hero, uh, Ralph Anderson, played by Ben Mendelsohn, is called to the scene. It's bad, Ralph. Ben Mendelsohn, I thought, was perfect to play that part since he is so skilled at being Rob. He's kind of a just the facts kind of guy, and, and if there is something to consider that is otherworldly, he will be appropriately circumspect about that. Ralph is uh, a man who is haunted by grief. He is haunted by the death of his son. A seasoned detective, what I see is what I know. We got a slew of witnesses, each of whom identified him out of a photo array without hesitation. I like to have a protagonist who has skin in the game, who has a reason to really hate this guy and to jump the gun and bring him in before he understands the whole landscape of this case. I only have one question for you. Did you ever touch my kid? He's a very classical kind of American character, good, upstanding guy who's faced with a situation which is way outside his scope. March 30th, 2019, did you murder Frankie Peterson? There's a, a scene at the, the beginning of the second episode where my character finally gets to talk to Ralph and to the audience about how innocent he is. Richard took that opportunity to empower that character to talk about basically how dare you think that I would do that to your kid. I didn't kill that kid, Ralph. And I thought to myself, I want this guy to find out little by little that the man he's arrested for this murder has a cast iron alibi in another place. I'm as baffled by this conflicting evidence as you are. Ralph pulls down, he's trying to absorb all the contradictory evidence, but it's too late. Harry was killed. He was heading to his arraignment. There was no exoneration. There was no anything. As far as anybody knows, they had the right guy. Look at the forensic. As a director, I'm really excited about the overall cinematography and production designs on, on sequences like this. You've got a bunch of extras. You've got multiple camera angles. You've got aerial. There's a special effects crew that has to wire all these characters with squibs to, to shoot blood out, that have to time out with guns that don't exactly fire. You want to try to build out the, the, the scope and the scale of it. It takes 95% of the work to make sure everything's teed up and ready to go. And then the last 5% is action. Is there a mystery here? Yes. You just need to learn how to live with it and move on. Yeah, that's hard for me. Even though he tried to save Terry's life, Ralph's the one that clapped the cuffs on him. But he feels he has to either prove Terry did it or exonerate Terry. This guy's looking to say, what did he miss? What did he get wrong here? What if he didn't do it? He didn't do it. He didn't do it. If he didn't do it, someone else did. One of the things that I love about directing is creating mood and dread and an atmosphere that preconditions an audience to accept something that is other than what we are all exposed to every day. Because what always interests me in stories like this how does a person cope with the unbelievable? How does a person deal and keep his sanity with a situation that doesn't seem to have any rational solution in the world? We have to take these in and say, I can't believe this. This doesn't make any sense to me. There's no reason for it. And yet there it is. If Terry Maitland is innocent, which he's not, if he is, we're not done.